Deep within these ancient soils of Arizona, amazing stories are hidden, waiting to be told. Stories about an exotic world of long ago, a world before the dinosaurs appeared. The steamy swamps were alive with lumbering beasts and primitive reptiles. The Thecodonts ruled over this soggy land. Prospectors roam these badlands. Their eyes fixed to the ground, hunting for treasure more precious than gold. Toposaur. They come to the petrified forest of Arizona to uncover mysteries told by fossil remains of prehistoric animals that lay buried in the dark earth for over 200 million years. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Something else? Yep. A toposaur. Big one. Lots just... of it around here. What strange secrets will this fossil bone tell of the bizarre world it lived in? Prospectors are paleontologists from the University of California at Berkeley. They come to study ancient life in the fossil record of primitive reptiles that lived before the dinosaurs appeared. But now they have begun searching for clues to a new drama about to unfold, about the origins of the great age of the dinosaurs. When and how did the dinosaurs evolve? Here. In this burial ground of extinct life, no complete dinosaur skeleton has ever been found. But it is here, in this thousand-foot cemetery of creatures, frozen in time, that paleontologist Brian Small found something unexpected and wonderful. And he's very shy, but I think we can get him up to at least say one or two words. <laughs> Brian? Well, I don't know what all's been going on here. How'd you here. know it was a dinosaur, Brian? Tell us about your discovery. Okay, there were four of us that went down just to look for plant fossils one day. It was towards the end of the season, things had been winding down. And I decided just to wander off up this one little canyon, as I tend to do. And uh, there was these little bones washing out. At first, I didn't think anything of them. I'd sit down picking around and I picked up what we call the astragalus, the ankle joint. Highly diagnostic bone and uh, I knew right then that we're not dealing with your typical pre primitive reptile. Of course it wasn't until later that I just found out it was the world's oldest dinosaur. <laughs> Team leader Robert Long hopes they will find a complete dinosaur skeleton to go with the ankle bone Brian found. Rob Long returns to the University of California, eager to organize an expedition back to the desert. It was pure luck that Brian Small found this specimen. The rate of erosion in the petrified forest is remarkable. Uh, with the rains coming in each year, bones that aren't discovered are quickly turned to powder. They literally explode. And luck is what it takes for bones to even become fossils. Just the right conditions must exist for the slow process to begin. Most bones decay and disappear without a trace. But the 1% that sink into mud or sand and are buried quickly might become fossils. Rainwater carries dissolved mineral salts down through the sediments. Over millions of years, the bones are transformed into stone, their tiniest details preserved. The minerals slowly seep into the porous bones and gradually harden into crystals. A permanent record of ancient life. Our guess from the structure of the ankle bone is this is the great granddaddy of the brontosaurus that 
course, are the most famous and largest dinosaurs of all time. This would take the dinosaur line way back into the Triassic times, over 225 million years ago. Imagine you are a time traveler, and you journey back to Arizona as it was over 200 million years ago. You arrive in a tropical forest, steaming with humidity. Rivers and streams flow down from the mountains, crisscrossing a wide floodplain. The terrain is dotted with small lakes, marshes, and bogs. Great stands of conifer trees tower over a profusion of ferns and cycads. There are no flowers here, no birds. You must wait another hundred million years. Imagine yourself in this primeval jungle, so alive with strange creatures. Giant reptiles, like the phytosaur, rule the swamps. This is the land of the Thecodonts, the primitive ancestors of the first dinosaurs, and from which the birds, crocodiles, and flying reptiles will evolve. Now, Thecodonts haven't become very well known to the public, and it's too bad. They were every bit as bizarre as the dinosaurs. Some weighed many tons, had huge heads. They were the size of buses. Others were jackrabbit-sized. Some were heavily armored like armadillos. The reason we know that the ankle bone that Brian Small found is dinosaur and not the giant reptiles, the thecodonts, is the structure of the ankle bone is so different. Here is the ankle bone of one of these thecodonts. There's a lot of movement between the, the ankle bones so that when the legs were jutting out, you would get lots and lots of uh, ankle action. The dinosaurs are very different. The two ankle bones are fused solidly, so there's no movement between the two bones. Very ostrich-like, so the, bo the legs were directly underneath the body, and they didn't want to be all flexible. They wanted to be inflexible. And so they allowed dinosaurs to move much more quickly, so dinosaurs grew to the largest land animals of all time. were already dying out when the first dinosaurs appeared. But it's possible that our little dinosaur was the lunch of a thecodont. Millions of years will pass. The climate changes many times. Soils wash down from the highlands piling layers of sediment over the bones. The soils are compressed into rock by the huge weight above. Earthquakes cause the layers to buckle and the fossils move with them. The endless cycle of erosion continues, stripping away the top layers of younger beds. Every year, fossils hidden in the dark for millions of years are exposed to the light of a vastly different world. At last, the day has arrived. The stillness of the desert is broken. Rob Long's team of paleontologists arrive at the site, anxious to complete their mission, to dig out the world's oldest dinosaur skeleton. It won't be easy to excavate the parcel of earth that holds the little bones and they won't even know what's in it until the work is completed back in their laboratory. Will they find a complete skeleton hidden in the earth at the bottom of this lonely canyon? The scientists can only hope that the little ankle bone that Brian Small found was attached to more. But how much more? Yeah. 
It's a slow, careful process because ordinary rock can be mistaken for fossilized bone. Even the tiniest bone tells a story, so they don't want to break any by mistake. either bone or it's not. <laughs> so it's just a piece of rock? Yeah. It's sort of a treasure hunt, and I think that's the way we all feel about it. This is pretty, in a lot of ways, routine, just going quietly, flaking pieces off. So I'm working down here where the bones are down there. I'm working down here where we don't think there is anything, so it's not quite as nerve-wracking as actually working right around the bone. You don't want to hit bone too fast. You want to go slow enough that you remove a small amount of matrix until you get down to the bone level. Then you stop. We don't want to get too close to the bone, but at the same time, we don't want to carry up more rock than we have to. <laughs> Be nice to have it either way. We know it's complete no, this way, but we might have. Oh, I don't know. It, is. it looks like they're both tibias. I think that's a tibia. And where is it? That is a tibia. We'll find out in Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, I think there's going to be a lot more underneath. <coughs> yeah, there. we're practicing our X-ray vision. Right. Imagine being the first person to unearth an animal that's been dead for over 200 million years. I think that uh, if you ask most paleontologists when they got in it, they were always in it, and they like to time travel. That's what this is all about. Uh, to actually go back and envision what the world was like at this time. It's more than just looking at your animals. It's, it's like going into a King Kong movie and actually being right there and uh, seeing the dinosaurs and everything else. This same fascination for the prehistoric past brought the first naturalists to the petrified forest. Trailblazer John Muir unearthed one of the first Thecodon skulls. In the 1920s, the adventurous Annie Alexander led several expeditions here and was so intrigued by the Triassic fossils that she sent for Professor Charles Camp from the University of California. Even today, his collection of the great Thecodont reptiles is the largest in the world. Fifty years later, Dr. Camp's elaborate field notes inspired Rob Long to return to the petrified forest to continue his quest for the missing pages in the curious story of how the dinosaurs first evolved. The paleontologists are up early and trek back down into the hot, dusty canyon, anxious to resume their treasure hunt. The discovery of the little dinosaur has raised their hopes for more. Is this site, in fact, a burial ground of many early dinosaurs? See, what's exciting is we're getting so many dinosaur specimens from here, from all over here. My feeling is, if we really had time to excavate this area, we might find a very large concentration of many dinosaur individuals, but it's still early. This is the femoral head, the top of the thigh bone, of what looks to be a little baby of the same kind of dinosaurs we have in the block here. It's very difficult to see, but the top is right here. This little white strip is the edge. That's right where it would fit into the hip socket. So there are now at least three individuals represented in this quarry, and we have a size range. This is obviously a little baby, and uh, by comparing this to the adult, we can get some idea of growth patterns and how, how these animals grow. Babies are only rarely represented in the fossil record, so this is a real treat. Many little bones are being found all around the site. But the more spectacular bones are clearly visible on the surface of the block. This is a real cute little dorsal vertebrae that was sitting here. And you know, most people that walk by here wouldn't even recognize this as bone. They just keep right on walking. But a trained eye can see this is a complete thigh bone. And then over here is part of the shin bone. And the knee would be here. You can see it's scattered around a little bit. 
there's more bone here. So there's bone scattered all through this, and we won't really know what we've got until we get it back to the lab and prepare it all out. How will they get their precious cargo out of the steep canyon? Over the past hundred years of dinosaur hunting in America, the techniques used to remove fossil bones from the desert haven't changed that much. On day three, plaster and water are hauled in. No, they're coming around that corner. Chuck and Louie, Chuck don't like it at all. I'll take this thing off and it'll fall flat on my face. Oh, oops. It's a fantastic occurrence. It's a media event. It has brought the eye of paleontology here to what we're doing here at the park. I mean, this is fun. This is exactly why I do this science. This is paleontology wrapping paper. It keeps the uh, plaster from touching the bone. If the plaster attaches itself to the bone, of course, it will destroy the bone. You make it sort of thick, soupy. And that way it will soak in to the wet burlap. And when it dries, it will dry very, very hard. All right. Here, take this one. The block of earth containing the bones must be protected by a jacket of hard plaster for a safe trip back to California. They're all wondering. Is there really a complete skeleton of the oldest dinosaur in here? You guys having fun, children? <laughs> yes. Sneaking across. Yeah. Just like mud pies for adults. Yeah. That should be part of the creek. Okay, the block at this point probably weighs between 1,200 and 1,500 pounds, so it's still very heavy. So we're saying it could happen if the bottom could drop out, but we have it pretty well undercut. So it looks pretty safe at this point, but you never know for certain until you get the block turned. plaster must dry before the block can be turned over. to the dinosaur and we can tell you what we know and what we don't know yet. Is this really the oldest dinosaur? Well, we have fragments that indicate dinosaurs were here perhaps millions of years before this one. But we do know with beyond any doubt that he's a brand new dinosaur and that's one of the confusing things. He doesn't fit precisely any specific group of dinosaurs. If this dinosaur is indeed a platyosaur that would have made a pretty docile and small pet. Some of these were chihuahua sized apparently and some got up to a uh, small great dame size. This is at this point in time what we think this dinosaur might have looked like if it is indeed a platyosaur. Long neck, small head, rather stupid <laughs> probably spent most of its time walking on all fours and this would be about one-sixth the size so we know we have a whopping small dinosaur here at the park
Uh, we're trying to try to launch this boat right after 6 o'clock. Stand for it. Everyone wants to know about the world's oldest dinosaur. Television crews and journalists have flown in from all over the country to cover the event. One of the things that I find remarkable about it is that we have this modern technology with helicopters and all the chemistry that's involved in preserving the bones applied to something that's 225 million years old. You know, that's really quite an extraordinary thing. And, you know, it's a new story that's taken 225 million years to develop. the size of the dinosaur. No, not at all, you know, uh, size doesn't matter, you know, it's the antiquity and the clues that it can provide, um, you know, for future study, that's important. This is certainly a once-in-a-lifetime event. It'll never happen again to me, the situation that I'll be telling my great-grandchildren about. Alone underground for millions of years, the little dinosaur will fly out of the desert, a hero. At last, the time has come for the paleontologists to find out what's really inside their carefully wrapped gift from the distant past. Have you come up with anything that'll uh, tell us definitely who this is? Have you got anything diagnostic? This one seems to be a dorsal vertebra. It's nice to see this piece of uh, cervical. Now we've got a little bit of caudal vertebrae, so there's a little bit of each part of the vertebral mm -hmm. column. We could hope for more in here around the edges. Looks like uh, part of another vertebra in here. Some more yeah. weathered bone. Bones of a dinosaur that hasn't seen the light for 225 million years. After four weeks of steady picking, the preparator has found 50 dinosaur bones. What we thought we'd find last summer, we didn't. We didn't find the head, we didn't find the neck, a few pieces of the neck, and we didn't find any of the forelimb, no, none of the hand bones. And this is the famous ankle bone that we started with. But what we did find was very exciting to us, rather unexpected. The femur was extremely long in this dinosaur, far longer than in any other early dinosaurs. It was a very swift running creature. You can see how long the femur is compared to, for example, the backbone. And each bone is peculiar. And so we know we have a brand new family genus and species, a completely new dinosaur. It seems to be intermediate. It has a curious combination of characters of both meat-eating dinosaurs and of plant-eating dinosaurs. To our surprise, as we laid out the dinosaur, behold, we had eight feet of dinosaur, much more than we thought, and he probably weighed about 150 pounds. And we're going back to the desert, to try and find the missing pieces of our dinosaur to fill in all the missing gaps. But we also hope to find early mammals that lived alongside of our early dinosaurs. A paratyposaurus we found it about two months ago, so take a look. But it's an infant science, and many of our answers are incorrect. But I hope to contribute and be proven wrong, as well as right, in future years. We will keep searching for more, because science is a process that always raises new questions. We'll be forever fascinated by these mysteries of the past, and we'll never have all the answers. <laughs>